What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the other side of the Firewall Podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest of cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shan Times. What's up? What's up? What's going on? And our special guest, so we have Aisha Hollins. She's a pioneer in digital forensics, as well as the CEO and founder of Forensic Technology. And we have Miguel Clark. He is a retired FBI agent who is also a senior uh GRC evangelist. There you go. I got it out <laughs> in the uh, the field. And together, they are um, the hosts of a podcast called The Making It Make Sense. So the IT Dean Information Technology. So the Making It Make Sense podcast that will uh, hopefully uh, soon uh, premiere. I'm going to keep on them about that <laughs> until it happens, but definitely tune into Wednesday's episode. So that'd be episode should be 399, uh, where we discuss more in depth of what the show is about and what they're trying to uh, accomplish through their storytelling. So definitely tune in for that one. And this is episode 400. So this is the uh, the, other, the other side of the, the firewall presents <laughs> the everything else show, right? So on Fridays, we talk about movies, games, books, all that good stuff. If you want to hear all about the cyber stuff, definitely tune in Monday and Tuesday there are topics Wednesday's discussion and now with that being said uh I give it to Shannon how was your week man it was it was not bad um so what took in a little bit of uh you know video gaming you know what I mean I don't video game as much as I used to but this uh, okay okay hor- horizon forbidden west <laughs> man it got me it got me man it's got me like the, like, the, like the spirits man you know but uh b- been putting some hours in on that getting some time in i don't even think i'm halfway through the game but i got like 60 hours in or something like that i'm doing all types of side missions and stuff like that i'm like man what am, what am i doing here <laughs> you know what i mean like i know i'm not halfway through but uh i've been doing a little bit of that uh documentary watching um just watching a few things out there so uh what's the one i watched recently rich and shameless with dennis rodman dennis rodman's millions was the name okay of it. and so it's how like he lost his money because his financial advisor uh you know was not doing what they were supposed to be doing which seems to be a common thing out there with these entertainers now right like you see more and more stories of you know these people that they thought were were trustworthy just taking their yeah, money you, them you need somebody to watch the person watching your money yeah you know i need a i need a lawyer for my lawyer you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> like it's, i don't know what's, what's going on out there but uh yeah it was rich and shameless dennis rodman's millions um watch that um oh uh, i also watched uh I don't know if you, any of you are Star Trek fans, but there's a Star Trek series. It's, uh, uh, oh, what is the name of it? Strange New Worlds. Strange New Worlds. Uh, watch that. Uh, that's a good series. Um, in the second season, it was only the second second week that they had out for the second season, but um, that was a good one. Um, usually I'm the action guy, right? So Ryan knows this. Usually with me, like I need to see, you know, a bunch of action. I need to see. Right, right. But it, about the squibs. Squibs about going the, off that action. Me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm about <laughs> that action, boss. You know what I mean? But but like uh this one, this this uh this last episode they had, it was more of a courtroom setting and it was the drama of it and everything that was going on. It was it was pretty good. Um but uh what else did I watch? Now with that being said, I did watch Extraction too. I don't know if I talked about that last week or not. <laughs> like I, did I, think, watch I think we did. I think we did talk about okay. it. Because I said I was gonna watch all this right. week and I did. Okay, all right. I, I, yeah. I watched a bunch of other stuff though. <laughs> all right, okay. But uh so yeah, we already talked about that one. But that was that was kind of it. Um not a lot of not a lot of TV watching. Um, you know, every once in a while, you know, I turn the news on, see what's going on there, but you know, that's not exciting. You know, it's one of those things where uh I do it just to make sure I'm not caught off guard by things that are going on in my city and and, and across the country. But that's kind of it for me, though. So I, I didn't do too much. You know what I mean? But Aisha, what about you? Y'all got me feeling like a workaholic. <laughs> I'm sitting here. <laughs> I'm sitting here literally like trying to play out my week. Like I just come up with something cool you did. Wait. <laughs> See, that, that's the... <clears throat> that's the burden of being a business owner, right? Like even your off time, you're doing business things. It it is literally. So this week, this past week, um, we actually completed, uh, started and completed our uh, second annual Internet Safety Tech Symposium. Um, we had the honor of having Mr. Miguel Clark here as our day one speaker. Um, matter of fact, um, so Monday got rave reviews. Tuesday, the whole week actually did, 
Monday and Tuesday were amazing with regards to feedback though. And so, you know, me and Miguel had to, had to jump on the phone and chop that up. So um, it was really, really good. He did an amazing job, but so did all of the speakers. I can't, I, 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 I'm remiss to point out just one over the other one. Um, it's, it's easier though, you know, with Miguel being right here in my face. Um, we um, also, because it's summertime, right? So there, it is, um, June is National Internet Safety Month. And then there was um, a group that I kind of work with and they had like these girls that was doing a STEAM summer camp. It's Ignite. And oh, so wow. um, even though I was hosting a conference, I would get off in the evenings and go help the girls <laughs> prepare uh their they they because they worked all week on various um things and then at the end they had a presentation for their parents before they could graduate from summer camp so we went down and we did summer camp and so some of the things that we taught was like internet safety that was on my side there was other people there I don't even want to remotely take credit for all of it right um, and so, um, but we had the girls develop and design, I had the girls develop and design avatars that helped to outline who they saw themselves as young black girls, right? Um, or black and brown. Um, so they were able to, to draw themselves out, but do it in such a way where their, their identity was still kind of masked. And it was a, it was a way to kind of teach art with them as well as cyber and internet safety. So really they cool. had a good time. We have pictures. The girls had a, a, an amazing time. Uh, or so they told me. So I'm just going to believe them until they tell me that they didn't until they write in. It's like, we hated Miss Hollins. <laughs> um, as far as television. So Aisha, Aisha, real quick, what, what age group are we talking about here? How, how? Great question. They were eight to 18. So the range was okay. huge. And, um, and the, the attention span was just as huge. So I, I had to get used to, cause the first couple of days it was, it was, it was a lot of like, whoa, right. Cause you, you'll be talking to some of the girls and the, the younger ones. Cause like, it was supposed to be eight to eight, 18, but I'm sorry that there, there was one six year old and two seven year olds. And so every now and then one would just start calling on the floor and the other would just get up and run off. Literally, they just ran away. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, whenever they come back, you know, but you know, they're, but they love the drawing piece, right? It was like, oh, I get to draw myself. So it was a lot of fun. Um, so so the, reason talk- I, the reason I asked, the reason I asked that, right, is because you were talking about the internet safety. And I wanted, I was curious how young you were starting out with that. And that, like, that's a good range, like, especially in this day and age, right? So like, I didn't grow up on the internet, you know what I mean? Like, that was one of those things that it came later on in life for me. But yes. children nowadays, like they're born into it, like this is the technology age and what they deal with. So starting out at that young, like I was, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. You know what I mean? Like my, I, I have a, I have a son who's 10 that I'm like, man, I need to, I need to be a little bit better with him. Like I do some things with him when it comes to like internet safety and things like that. But then it's like, I noticed, I noticed recently, I should have been paying closer attention that he had access to YouTube and I didn't have any uh, restrictions like on his, uh, his Amazon tablet. Right. And I was like, I gotta, I gotta get better on that. Like I know better than that. And it was, it it was something he was watching not too long ago that I heard something. I was like, "Mm, let me see that, man. Like, (laughs) look at that. (laughs) But yes, I was, that's a good thing. Like starting as low as eight, but you said, like you said, six and a couple seven year olds, that's even better, you know? Well, you're right. Um, They come out the womb playing now, right? how better to, I mean, literally, and, and, and it's kind of scary, but it's the truth, right? How do you keep them engaged? How do you keep them quiet? How do you keep them crying? Plop, and you plop it down right there with them. And you, you know, so they're already consuming. They don't have the fears that we have. They pick that device up and they just get to click, 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 click it. And the next thing you know, they're, they're, they've invited this world of stuff. It was amazing. The stories that the, as I was talking internet safety to the girls, the six-year-old and the seven-year-old gave me more stories than the 14-year-old did. There was times I looked from the six-year-old to her sister, the 14-year-old, and she's just slowly nodding at me like, yeah, that happened. And I'm like, what, what world are we living in, right? <laughs> 
but it makes you, it, it really makes you um, understand why it is and why I'm so passionate about internet safety and cybersecurity. People really think that some of the stuff that I say that I encounter, I either made it up or this, this is not true. If you listen to your kids, your kids will actually tell you so many things that you're not aware of. And our, our parents, they kind of want to hide their face, right? Right. Hand the saying, this is not my child. And I'm thinking, yes, it is. Talk to them. So I actually, you know, and that's why I said it in one of my, um, we have an internet safety masterclass that which we teach, we teach it. I'm not plugging. I'm sorry. It's just natural conversation. No, no, no. Go ahead um, and plug. Yeah. But in make, our, make sure you plug. <laughs> Yeah, so as part of our Internet Safety Masterclass, one of the, the games that I've introduced, and I want to take it actually a little bit beyond just the scope of just that class, um, but I, I started doing it because my daughter, right, my daughter is 10, um, and so what I started doing was, are you as cyber smart as a fifth grader? right? And so there's things that she and I will get into. There's conversations that we'll have because Miguel asked me, they remember you called me, you were like, what would your daughter do here? And so I started telling him, he was like, I could hear the really in his voice. No, I'm just throwing you under the bus. Um, but again, <laughs> but it's because I had to learn long ago to have these conversations with her that will, that can impress like the Miguel's when I'm telling him, okay, well, my daughter does this, or my daughter would say this, because as he and I both know, most 10 year olds are not going to talk like this. Right. And I had to be intentional about these conversations with my daughter, because I was like you, Shannon, I didn't, she's too young, right? I shouldn't have to have this conversation with my six-year-old, seven-year-old. And unfortunately, we live in a day and a time where we have to have that conversation with our six-year-old, our seven-year-old, or else you have teenagers that are disappearing. Yeah, absolutely. So, and, and uh, not to, to jump in too early, so to speak, right? We try to keep conversational and flowing and what have you, but yeah. it, it leads me to think like, so like, I think it's a, amazing that you you have uh, such a, a program or you're involved in the program that that is, uh, you know, teaching young women uh, how the internet, you know, works, safety, things of that nature. Uh, is anybody doing with the boys, I wonder, right? Because we, we do this thing, well, I started to notice, like even even myself as a parent, right? Where it's like, you teach your daughter one thing, you teach your son a, a different thing. And I try to always try to bridge that gap, right? I'll try to not have a standard that's not one over the other, but I think of my daughter differently. Than I think of my son, right? It's just it's a it's a dad thing. I'm sure it's a, it's also a mom thing, but I, I've never heard of anybody doing a camp for boys, right? Because I, I don't think having them together necessarily would, because uh, they use the internet differently. So like, yeah, there's some things that are, are, are common and what have you, but like, I've had a conversation with my son before, like, be careful with what your friends send to you, because if you receive a picture of, uh, you know, uh, like nudity or whatever, like that's child pornography, like, mm -hmm. and even though you're a child, you can still be hemmed up because of it, right? Um, so I know we're probably teaching our, 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 you know, our daughters and whatnot, like not to take these pictures and what have you, like, kind of like victimize, like, like telling them they have to act a certain way, but we're not telling the boys like don't receive these pictures or don't share them because <laughs> this will get you hemmed up as well, right? And then also they're taking pictures that are inappropriate things of that nature. Not, so what I'm trying to get to is like, I've never heard of a boy camp where it's like, hey, this is how you should be respecting the internet and, and what have you. I wonder if that exists. So I, I so so for me and, and Aisha, I'm gonna let you jump in here. I'm sorry, but let, let, me, let me jump in real quick. So I think it's because, I think it's because they're reacted to differently on the internet, right? So like when it comes to young girls, they're targeted differently than it is for young boys. I'm not saying young boys can't be targeted, but because right. because I'm, I'm with you, like I, I that double standard is there, you know what I mean? And I, mm -hmm. I I hate to admit admit it myself, you know what I mean? Like my girls are my bookends. Like I have four children, my oldest and my youngest, you know what I mean? Like the difference between them on how I had to raise them or how I am raising them, um, it's 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 very apparent. You know what I mean? Because of things that are going out. Because my my daughter, who's five, she also has an Amazon tablet, right? Like same yeah. thing with her. You know what I mean? So um, she could get on there, like when she's at home. Uh, she doesn't quite understand that when she leaves the house, uh, you know, she can't get to certain things because she's not on the Wi-Fi anymore, right? So she's like, "Yeah, they won't play." I'm like, "Baby, it's not going to, right?" Like, we, right. you know, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So it's like, but um, but yeah. So I I think that's the reason why is that they're 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 
I don't want to say attacked, right? But there's different ways that they are approached on the internet. Aisha, go ahead. Say, say what you're going to say. I'm sorry. Well, no, and no apologies at all. No, um, with, with regards to my class, it's not gender exclusive. So you can be boys or oh, okay, girls, gotcha. right? Gotcha. Okay. Um, the camp, however, um, that is, that's, and we do have a lot of initiatives around girls in code, right? Girls who code, because the, the mindset right now is that, you know, boys can do anything. Girls are limited in what they can do. So for the boys, they're never going to be told that they can't. And um, right. you take our girls in steam and you get them to a particular point. And that was one of the conversations that happened, right? In, 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 in camp this week, I asked them, I was like, well, has anybody ever told you? And they, I mean, all of them, yes, they tell us we can't do tech. And right, I'm that's, like, that's well, a shame. That's exactly right. Yeah. And so um, it's, it's kind of like, even when we were younger, they would tell, you know, boys, they can go climb a tree. Girls stay out of the trees, you know, stay clean, do blah, blah, blah. So, um, but yeah, no, as far as my class, as far as I'm concerned, I teach both because I think you're right. The awareness needs to go across the board. But um, some of these things is just about putting that awareness back and empowering our girls. Don't just think just because it's math and it's science that you can't do it. I'm never, math and right. science were actually my two favorite subjects. I, I don't even subscribe to that. I don't, I don't know where this comes from. Um, but then too, you know, I, I grew up where, no, there, yes, we had to stay clean and stay out of trees, but. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, I didn't mean to conflate the two. So it, it's, uh, again, that's education on my, my piece, right? So yes, the empowerment piece, like, absolutely. Cause yeah, uh, you, you don't see a lot of women in, in, in tech still. Like we have, we have you on the show, we have, uh, Chelsea Pierre on the show. Uh, but uh, again, it's not like, um, it, it's not as, as even it should be right. Women make up like over half the population yet. They, they only make up like, I think it was like maybe 25% uh, of uh, IT in general, which is uh, a shame. And like you said, it's, it comes out of uh, the belief that they can't do STEM and things of that nature. So yeah, I didn't mean to conflate those two. Uh, I, I think it's more of the, like for my, my, my piece was the kind of like teaching boys to properly use the internet. Uh, it's not all, you know, fight videos and, and half naked, you know, uh, females and things of that nature. And I don't think that they're they're being taught that like uh but but uh girls on the other hand is like hey you know it's kind of like telling them a certain way of behaving like you said like don't climb trees don't don't get your knees marked up I remember that as a child too I remember playing with my cousins and that's what my aunt would say to my uh my female cousins like oh you want to you want to mess your legs up have scars stuff like that but like for me they're like right. hey, you just go get hit by a car it's fine <laughs> <laughs> Baby, it was all of so, you did not mess up the knees, yeah. child. Oh. So it is, it is, it is that double standard, which is crazy, and uh, it just seems to be perpetuated. But like, like your camp and and the things that you're involved in, like that's amazing. So, but I don't mean to go too much with detail. We gotta get Miguel in here too. <laughs> man, I'm just listening to all these things, man. I mean, it's like this is pretty cool, and I'm thinking about um, answers to some of the questions because that's kind of what I do. Um, as parents, you are thinking about the most likely outcome for your child, whether it's male or female, and then you're trying to protect against that. So with the boys, you're like, yeah, I don't want you to be targeted and be the victim of something violent happening to you because you have the wrong things in your possession. And so from a girl, you're like, okay, I don't want you to be a different kind of victim. Uh, but it's important to note that from my experience, uh, they, they get victimized equally uh, on the internet, right? So just because we're not conceiving of it uh, doesn't mean that there's not somebody out there that that's looking to try to, to groom uh, someone. And, and, you know, it's, it's difficult because kids are getting on the internet and using these uh, different tools earlier and earlier. But if you look at most of the terms and conditions, uh, they really recommend not under the age of 13, especially as it relates to social media. So it's just, it's a, it's, it's interesting, right? When I did the uh, internet safety, um, sometimes I've done those internet safety for my wife when uh, she was uh, an assistant principal. And then also when she was teaching, and you go and you talk and they were, you know, fifth and sixth grade and all of them had social media and none of them were 13. So you start to think about it. It's like, so which, so who in the house is accepting the risk on your behalf now, right? Because you, you can't, you're not old enough to accept that risk. Mm -hmm. Right, right. 
No, that's very true. And then uh, I guess that goes into uh, sextortion and uh, like revenge porn and things of that nature as well. Like things that they don't teach them. Like uh, when I was in Turkey, that was the big thing was sextortion. Like as soon as you, yeah. that was one of the first things you were briefed. Like not only that you can't say certain things in front of the uh, the locals because of uh, national, political, regional issues, but right. hey, be on the lookout that you may receive a text or you may receive an email uh, or a blind WhatsApp message invoking you to send pictures or to engage with this person who is going to flip those things on you <laughs> yeah. and then when that happens you need to hurry up and talk to jag and legal because <laughs> you're in trouble but you're not as much trouble as if you start paying them so <laughs> we right. need to hurry up and fix the situation before you get in more legal trouble yeah but you're teaching that to adults right you're not teaching that to, to kids all the time like i'm just like man i wish there was just a little bit more of that education but you uh it's it's that delicate balance right like where you don't want to rob them of their childhood right, right. but at the same time you want them to be educated and not get caught up in in that type of nonsense yeah it's overconfidence is, is probably the biggest issue when it gets right down to it, right? When you start to think about kids, they're trying to learn how to be adults and see, we don't have kids, right? That's not something that, you know, for my wife and I, we don't. Um, but these, as they're growing up, they're trying to learn how to be adults. And it's like, I can, I can, I can. Everybody thinks they're more grown than what they actually are. And they think that they can accept some of those risks. So it's, I think, really important to let them know that there are things out there that they're not seeing. Uh, we learn by seeing our own blind spots. Very true. No, and for very me, true. it's like I try to make it where, um, kind of like what you heard before, even the podcast, make it make sense for my kids or not just kids. For I try to focus on how to learn in the most fun way possible, right? Um, if you don't know that you're learning, you learn, right? It's when, it's when we tell our brains we must retain, right? Immediately, there's something within our body that wants to shut down, right? It was like, oh my God, please don't teach me that, you know? And it's like, so your brain is like, it's, it's coming in, right? We're just hammering it back out. And so, but if we can teach you, put your, put your guards down, right? Let's have a little bit of fun. Let me teach you how to think. So again, so again, make it make sense. Uh, even with my com my conference, it's all a matter of consciousness. If you if you just learn to think different, man, I had a good time. Um, you know, it's one of the things we talk with the girls at the camp about, right? They all play this game called Among Us, right? You guys have heard this game, right? So the whole point knows, Shannon. Oh my God, I've, I've, I've played it. <laughs> I played yeah. it myself as a grown-up. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so there's like Among Us. Um, the whole goal is to find the imposter. So we're teaching our kids to find the imposter or the person that doesn't belong, right? So who's here that doesn't belong? So if we take that and we flip the concept or or enhance the concept, so I'm that's one of the things that I wanted, right? It's it's how do we teach them what to look for? And the, the other thing, so like we all the kids, they're on Roblox, right? So why are we not why, we allow them to play Roblox, but we're not teaching them about private servers. And so even when I'm talking to the to the girls on, on this past week, do y'all and they're all excited. It's like, oh yeah, we don't like private servers. Well, why don't you like private servers? It's not a whole lot of people there. There's a bunch of people on the public servers, and there's not a lot of people on the private servers. And well, there's a reason. Okay, so let's think about this as, as a pool. Do you want the overcrowded pool? Do we know what's floating in the overcrowded pool? And they're like, Ugh right? It's all a matter in how you think. So would you rather have the pool that's got all the, the extra stuff, right? Sometimes extra stuff is extra security. You know, this is all in how you think right. about it. No, that's, that's very true. And it's for Shannon's uh, edification. Uh, so Among Us is like, guess who? Virtual. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you so have to figure out who is the killer because one of you is the killer. Okay, so and not get the so the killer can't get caught, right? Uh, and then you do a vote, like somebody will hit the button, like, okay, I think I saw something, and you, you have to figure out, like, is the imposter lying to you? Like, is one of these people trying to say, like, pink or green is the uh, the killer, and then you eject one of the people. And if you're correct, the game ends, you find the imposter. If you're wrong, you just kicked out one of your teammates, they're gone now, <laughs> so and then you go back to another round. 
so is this the game? So have you guys seen the second Knives Out movie? Is this yes. the game? Yes. Playing? Yep. That's is it. The, is this the game he's playing in the bathtub? Yeah. And they're like, we all saw you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There's, there's a, a a very funny clip of Soldier Boy playing Among Us, and he is the uh, the killer, and, but he convinces everybody he's not, and he's very Soldier Boy about it. <laughs> screen, that's cap that's cap it's hilarious uh it really put them on a map because the game had been out for a while but then it had a resurgence because of famous people started playing it yeah so you might like it shannon it might be that might be your your draw that might bring you in to this this world i'll tell i'll tell you how i, how I tell my wife when i don't really want to do something but like i uh, will see so, right. Put, let's she, put a pin in it. She knows, she knows that means no. <laughs> you know, she knows that means no. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. So, uh, Miguel, how's how's your week? What'd you what'd you get into? Yeah, my week was good. Not nearly as productive as Aisha, man. I didn't go to camp and I didn't like make any efforts to save the world, man. Well, that's not true. I was playing Diablo 4. Uh, and so I was like, trying to save the world on Diablo, right, from from being uh, destroyed by greater evils, man. So I am a gamer, I've been a gamer since like way back when, man. Uh, uh, Vic 20 uh in the 1980s, way back when. Okay. Uh, so that's one of my favorite things to do. Um also, um, well, I I was in law enforcement, so there's certain things that law enforcement folks have to do to remain proficient, and I like doing those things too. Gotcha, uh, but gotcha. it was a good okay. week, man. It was a really good week. <laughs> that's what's up. So, like my my oldest son, so middle middle child, junior, he is addicted to Diablo. I just it's too it's too too deep for me. So if you listen to the previous episodes, I talk about it every week how I want to get into it, but I can't. Yeah. So I'm, I'm playing Breath of the Wild. Like I'm playing Diablo for babies, basically. <laughs> well, so, let so, me know when you start up a new character, man. Just hit me up, man. I'm on PS5 gotcha. and and uh, we'll start from the very beginning because it is super complicated if you jump in in the middle, but you start at the beginning, it won't be bad. Gotcha. Is it cross platform? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Shane, last question. No, no, no. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. So yeah, it is, okay, man. so may, maybe, yeah. maybe, but now I got to chip in because I made him buy it himself. I was like, I'm never playing that. You buy it. <laughs> if I play it, then I have to play. Like, All right, here's 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 your money back. <laughs> it's a matter of principle. That's what it's about. I understand, right. man. You got to stand on principles. <laughs> but we'll see. I'll probably cave sooner or later. But go ahead, Shannon. My, my bad. No, no, you're good. You're good. Uh, so, so Miguel, I got to ask you about this, right? Because Diablo, I'm hearing about it at work. I got a coworker that's really big, two coworkers that are kind of big into it. Yeah. So, like, are you one of these hardcore players that only gets the one life type thing or no? Do you just. My real life is too short for that. Right. Like <laughs> I'm, I, you know, I can't just watch all of my progress just go because of all the things that can go wrong on the internet. Right. I mean, any of us have been around internet for a while. We know. Right. I mean, it's like, you know, packets, something can happen. And if I have a like a 40 hour character and then like that happens and then I die, um, my response will be unchristian. We'll just say that. <laughs> right. Like, we'll just say that Jesus would be like, see, now that's why I didn't want you playing this game to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how to act when things don't go your way. So, no, no, I, I like to be able to look back at my progress and say, yeah, so it's good. Not hard, not hardcore in that way at all. Okay. All right. Yeah. It was, it was like, he, he had sent me a picture of something and I was like, I don't know what that is. Cause it was like within a week of the game being out, there was like all these people that were level 100, which I guess is the highest level. Yes. And it said 163. This is a week or a week and a half ago, however long, two weeks ago, probably now 163 hardcore players. And I had to ask him, I was like, what is hardcore? He's like, Oh, you go through with just one life. Like if you die, like that's it. Like you're done. I was like, wait a minute. They got to level 100 in a week. First off, I was like, right, how right. much time like, are they putting in? They, to they, they played they played it like it was a job. Yeah. 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 They like, know life the game. That's it, right? So yeah. for this game, it's like I don't have any life. Everybody understand. Yeah, that's it. It, it was it was an interesting concept to me. I was like, I cannot play a game like that. Because there's times I just want to adventure out and try something crazy. Like, I wonder if I could do this. You know what I mean? Oh, nope, I died. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know you play I mean? games to relax, right? Yeah, you don't play. Yes. I don't play games to be stressed, right? I mean, that, that I had a stressful job for almost 24 years. So when I'm playing, I want to be able to, like, relax. I might yell at the television a little bit. But, you know, for the most part, I'm having a good time. <laughs> you have the television, you have the controller, but like, man, this thing is faulty, man. You know, yeah, I, it is. I, I definitely did that. Yeah, blame the tools, right? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah my, my, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice. 
it, <clears throat> last time, I promise. So it's like, uh, I read this thing about being an introvert. Like I, we only talk as much as we have to and we're prone to losing our voice. And I was like, I don't believe that to be true. And then the podcast has taught me like over the past few weeks, that I guess I don't talk that much. <laughs> Because the more I talk, the the worse it gets. So maybe there's something to it. I don't know. I don't know. But um, never lose mine. <laughs> you said you never lose yours. <laughs> you're the extrovert on this call. <laughs> so maybe, I'm an maybe introvert. Some truth to it. Maybe some truth to it. You are know. not. Yes, I am. Yeah, introvert for sure. So you can be intro. You can be introverted and still public speak. So yes. like I I have to speak sometimes for uh, my job. So I did a tabletop not too long ago, and near the end of it, like four hour tabletop, I was struggling to get words out. <laughs> I still had to perform, but like my voice was like gone. Okay, but I'm still stuck. <clears throat> yes, but you're saying he's yes. not. <laughs> you're saying Miguel's not. <laughs> for sure, I am absolutely. Wow. So this public speaking and that is that is a persona. Uh, I wouldn't say it's quite an alter <laughs> ego, but it is most definitely a persona. So that's where you get the big energy. You get like that, you know, that is the persona. And then I can put that persona away, right? I was like, all right, go over there and you relax now, stop talking. And then I just like, you know, get on the game, go do something else, play with my Rottweiler. Yeah. Okay. All right. There it is. But um, I, I, I may dive into it. I, I don't know. But uh, aside from uh, work, I did do a little bit of work over the weekend. I got to do a little bit more work today. I, it is what it is. But um, I was able to squeeze in. Like I watched all of Black Mirror, the new season. So I don't know if, if I know Shannon's not, that's not really your thing. But well, so that her was not your thing either. I was going to say, if you watch the entire, uh, I think it's season six, uh, it goes from like, uh black mirror is typically uh sci-fi uh, that's that's where it's it's like the black mirror being the either your your tv screen your monitor or your uh your phone right the black mirror is it like the, the the concept so it's always a, a kind of horror take on uh actual tech uh but this season they actually dive into a little bit of horror there's there's two out of the six episodes are actual horror episodes that have little to do with tech i was really impressed they did a good job i was like wow so this might be where they're trying to to go perhaps because they they spoofed themselves like the first episode is a spoof on netflix it's called strawberry or something like that it's a streaming service and mm. like they literally yeah streamberry mm. yeah mm. They, they literally lay into themselves and it's pretty hilarious and it goes into what you're talking about like you don't know what's in the in the uh the ula right like you don't know what's in that user agreement it dives deep into that so the the episode is called uh i think it's some, jonah's awful or something. yeah jonah's awful it's yeah. it's she like it, she's watching an episode, uh, a TV series on herself. And they're like, how is this possible? She goes to her lawyer. She was like, well, on page so-and-so, so-and-so, you signed your life away. Like, it's in the user agreement. Like, did you not read it? She was like, no, I didn't read 54 pages of user agreement. Uh, but later on in the episode, they go into, like, it's not just Jonah. Joan, who's awful. Like, they show, like, it's a broader thing. They're like, con they're like curtailed content for each user of the service. So everybody's getting their own episode. It's like, it's hilarious. It's like, that's what you get. <laughs> so it's not only making fun of Netflix, but it's making fun of the, the watchers of Netflix like myself. So I have a question, because like I did have somebody reach out to me. It was like, I hope you're watching Black Mirror because season six is blah, blah, blah. I started Black Mirror when it first came out. I was not a fan. Didn't it, gets, it gets better. Like the, the first season is very British. So it's very it was, dry, dark. Yeah. Yes. But so then as, just me. Yeah, but as as it became more popular, they got a lot of uh, American actors and they, they kind of they rounded it off a little bit. So it still has a little bit of that British humor, but it's a lot more Americanized. So it's satirical and funny to us as opposed to just like not to, I, I don't know if any British people listen to this. I like British humor, but it's a it's it's an acquired taste. <laughs> so do the seasons build on each other? Can I just go to they they Black they mirror season six? They do and they don't. So if you if you watch it all the way through, you'll see things you're like, oh, this is all connected. But you don't have they don't have to. They're all vignettes, but they do tie to each other in a in a uh, somewhat meaningful way, right? So if you're like a fan like me, where you watched all of the content, you'll be like, ah, I see it. <laughs> I was like, I see where you I see what you did there. But if you just watch them as vignettes, it's fine. So I can never I can never get into it because I had somebody tell me to watch a specific episode. It wasn't you, Ryan. So you're off the hook on. This. I'm off the hook on this one. You're off the hook on this one, right? <laughs> I had somebody tell me to watch a specific episode, um, and I didn't like it. Like it was, um, 
there was one, and I don't think I'm spoiling anything because it's several years ago now. Yeah. But there was one where it had uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, the one from Jurassic World, the redhead from Jurassic World. Okay. Ron Howard's daughter. But she was, uh, in life, people would like rate people on what they did. In oh, life. yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Like, yeah. Like yeah. reviews on people like you do for Yelp or whatever, right. Uber or Lyft, and everything you did throughout your life, that's what they did. And like, they were like, if you if you like this one, you'll like the series. And I like, I don't even no, know. No, no. So that that's not a bad episode. Like, I did enjoy that one. I would I would have a different recommendation for you because uh, they they have some that are action oriented. So uh, and they have one that's that's Star Trek oriented. That's actually really funny. It's called uh, McAllister. Uh, is the name of the ship. Like that that one is is dark for totally different reasons. <laughs> is that, so is that the new one from this season with the no, guys that are on the space? Okay, all right. That so that that is. I don't think you like that one. That one's too quiet. Uh, like like that that one is is. Uh, artistic for artistic sake like i enjoyed it but uh i think you would like the i think it was season four is the one with McAllister with the it's either season four or season five i'll, I'll shoot you a link to it i think you would enjoy that if, as a trekkie you'd be like yeah i can see <laughs> i can see how this could be an, a take on star trek like this is this is stuff that no one wants to talk about Okay. Yeah, I was kind of right. hoping it would be kind of like the American Horror Stories. You know, it's like when you've consumed that that season, it's a whole new season. And and it is and it isn't, which is the like it's 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 like if you play uh, again a deep cut like Final Fantasy, right? Each Final Fantasy is a game to itself. That's literally Final Fantasy, right? But if you play all of them, they all have little hooks. So you're like, oh, okay, I see little Easter eggs. So it's it's not necessary at all. There's only one episode where they tie everything together and it, you don't even have to watch that one if you don't want to it has um the female actress that played shuri in black panther that's the first time I, I saw her in something that was that was her episode uh where it's like a museum of horrors but as you go through the museum it's it's different parts of different episodes where you're like oh this is all connected in some way so it's a very meta in that way but you don't have to watch you can watch <laughs> any piece oh i don't know if you're a series take off see <laughs> listening. listening to me but you, you can you can completely watch them in any order you want to like, none of them are sequels to any of the other ones it's just that one episode that ties the the stuff together okay because like i because i did do the kaleidoscope and i it there's, was there's there's some misses yeah there's, there's definitely some misses in there um yeah because then that, yeah no go ahead no i was gonna say because there, there's a couple episodes where i was just like yeah oh i don't think you're dog barking this is what happens when I'm not in my office. <laughs> um, and then um, Shannon had suggested Citadel on one of you guys' shows. So I went back and I did watch Citadel. And because uh, so I saw what he meant, the double cross to the double cross to the recross. And then at some point on we back to the original cross. And so I had heard him say that. So by the time I got to sit, I was like, that's what he meant. <laughs> See, I didn't finish yet. I have to finish it. I think I got to episode four because like six, right? There's like six episodes. It's six. Yeah, six. Yeah. And I just, I, it wasn't that it was bad. I just, I fell off of it. So I, that might be this this Sunday or, or next week. I got to finish it. So I could, I could talk to intelligently to Shannon about it. But I, I'm not, like, you can only do so many crosses where I'm just like, mm. <laughs> Uh, it, 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 does, it does get to that point right like if you do if you do two 180s you're back where you started right like right, so like, right. where are we where are we at here <laughs> but uh aside from that like i, I played some more breath of the wild so i'm like 65 hours in i want to say and nice. i've only made it to the third temple so i'm in the fire temple you can do them in any order you want to like the game's completely open you can do anything you want to do basically um i it's a game of distraction like i mean I'm, I'm loving it like my my son will watch me and he'll be like what where are you at? What are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm doing X, Y, and Z. He'd be like, they watch me and then I'll start doing something else. And he'd be like, but you said you were doing this. This is your objective. And I'd be like, yeah, but this is shiny. I got to go do this over here real quick because I don't know I'm going to be back because <laughs> the game was so expansive. Um, but thoroughly enjoying it. Like, so usually I like to get in, get out of a game. Like, you got me for 20 hours, story driven. Uh, but something about Zelda, yeah, like it, it, it just does it for me. It's the, the, the mystery, the wonder uh and it's like a childhood favorite so you they get away with a hundred hour game i'll play that it's also one of the best games pretty much created out there now so i mean it's just it's well done nintendo typically does a really good job in the breath yeah. of the wild that series that zelda series is is some of the best from the writing the content production value all of that yeah, and i haven't have played it 
Yeah, I would say they don't have to do much. Like, like it's never like I think the most story driven one I've played would be Ocarina of Time, and that was barely like it's enough story to drive you, and it, you kind of fill in the gaps yourself. Uh, Breath of the Wild is like literally like I, I typically like to play a character, right? I, I want you to tell me who I am and what my objective is. And Breath of the Wild, you have that, uh, you have enough of that, but like literally, it's my own adventure. I'm just, I'm just doing stuff. <laughs> and I, I typically shy away from those. Like I, I don't want to. Uh, as a kid, I didn't like those uh, choose your own adventure books, right? I want you yeah. to tell me what Indiana Jones is supposed to be doing. Like, I don't want to flip to chapter five on my own decision. Usually, at least the death, the boulder crushes me. I don't want that. <laughs> so that's that's your fallouts. That's your other Western RPGs. I just like I uh, I don't want to be my own person. Like, tell me what I need to do, and I'll go do it. Uh, but Zelda, Zelda has that that hook. I just like, yeah, I'll, I'll go. I'll go explore for, you know, an hour underground, just doing nothing, just, <laughs> just foraging. Right. Yeah. And, and enjoy it. But they make that experience feel good. Right. And that's, what's different in these other open world games is they don't, they don't do that. Right. The game doesn't support that type of gameplay and make it interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I totally agree. So that's probably the only thing I'm going to be playing until, uh the fall where I, I keep telling shannon i'm gonna play horizon it's gonna happen i'm gonna <laughs> i'm finally gonna play the robot dinosaur game because it should be right up my alley um and then did you play there, god of war i did i did okay right and right oh yeah yeah me, me yeah. and shannon chopped up about, about that for a minute but i think shannon got more out of it than i did i mainlined it <laughs> i w- I was 70 some odd hours. Yeah. I nah. love the side stories and all that. Like, I, like, here's the thing. You got to get your money's worth at that point. right? Which is true. Which is true. Like you, you get all the value out of the game. That's, that's where I used to be. Uh, but now it's just it's too many games. Like I, I got, I'm, I, I gotta be part of that, that FOMO, right. I gotta get my hands on as many of these experiences as possible. So like, I feel bad for the person who designed that 80th hour that I did not experience. I didn't see it. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I platinum that game, man. That, that's like I, I got every trophy I could. Okay. Really? Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was that good to me. Yeah, how, was, many, how many hours is that, Miguel? You know, you know how many hours it was? Do no, I'm have to go check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it in the LinkedIn chat, man, when yeah, I find yeah, out. Because like, like I, I, I put it, I put in a lot of time with the seventy some odd hours, but I didn't, I didn't get everything. You know what I mean? I got a good bit, but I didn't get everything. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to exactly like numerically display how nerdy I am, man. Not not for everybody <laughs> listening. Yeah, but I have no problem sharing it in the chat. Though. I, I can do that. <laughs> there it is. But uh, yeah, so I, I plan on hanging out with the family uh, and then hopefully not doing a lot of work uh, during the weekend, you know, recharge my batteries and get ready for that that 4th of July weekend. Yeah. Uh, anybody have any any crazy plans for the 4th? Probably going to uh, smoke, a, smoke a pork shoulder. Okay. So that's my other thing I like to do, man. I like to get on the smoker. I got a wood-burning smoker. So uh, I like to use pecan. So that's probably where I'll spend about seven hours with a couple of slow-cooking uh, pork shoulder. That and sounds I ain't, delicious. I ain't, my, I ain't <laughs> had my breakfast yet. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> Neither have I. <laughs> I messed myself up, man, talking about what I'm going to do in 10 days. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably do some travel. I'm going to go see some family. Um, for the, for, it'll be my first fourth back in a couple of years. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The last fourth, I was uh, in Turkey watching fireworks on a tennis uh, court. <laughs> Listening to a uh, Turkish uh, cover band, right? Doing American uh, Fourth of July type music. But they were actually pretty good. <laughs> pretty cool yeah but yeah that excited to be home uh but yeah I, so uh to to wrap this up i didn't use the analogy i i, I shied away from it all for because aisha uh she she made me feel bad for using the same analogy <laughs> so to, to to put a bow on this this episode <laughs> uh definitely check out uh aisha and miguel on uh the making it make sense podcast when it debuts we'll definitely make sure we advertise as much as possible thank you to the listeners for uh for checking us out each each day for the past i don't even know how many uh weeks we've been doing this right so this is episode 400 uh we didn't start out doing uh four episodes a week but then we eventually got there i think uh in in uh year two and then quickly flew past uh what i expected right most pet pet 
most podcasts don't make it past like 12 episodes. So for you guys to be rocking with us for 400 episodes is amazing. Uh, and then obviously thank you to uh, to Shannon, who is uh, in, in almost all of those, I think you're like 99% of those episodes. <laughs> Shannon does not take uh, any time off. So I greatly appreciate it. Uh, and he he definitely earns his uh, his paycheck, which I, I don't pay him. So <laughs> <laughs> he's earning somebody's paycheck. It's, it's not for me. So I, I greatly appreciate that for for rocking with me for for that many episodes. Hopefully we have four and more in our uh, in our future, right? So definitely check out their podcast. Definitely continue to tune into our podcast and uh, leave us your feedback and all that good stuff. You can hit us up at all the websites that go by our names, social medias. I'm at Rai Rai Security Guy. You can find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Clubhouse. And you, Aisha. And you can find me on the social media platforms, um, each of them at either Dorensic and at Aisha Speaks, all one word. There it is. And then you, Miguel? I'm a little bit more difficult to find, but you can find me on LinkedIn um, at Miguel Clark with an E at the end. There it is. And then obviously Shannon is uh, off the grid. So you have to leave your comments on <laughs> YouTube and, <laughs> and LinkedIn, and I will pass those to Shannon. So that way he can, uh, he can read it and laugh. But uh, thank you for, uh, for tuning in. I, I do greatly appreciate it. Uh, thank you for rocking with us and, you know, continue to do the thing. Stay safe, stay secure. Thank you.